Wow, go on squad. So today we are cooking some Sunday dinner. Brown stew chicken is a super savory stew. No spices, a lot of flavor and this pairs perfectly with coconut rice and peas and fried plant. Sunday is reserved for some of the most delicious foods and this is close to the top of that Sunday dinner list. We have a lot to do today, so let's get into it. First, let's make some Jamaican green season to marinate the chicken. This is roughly one large onion. I'm going to blend this so some rough chops good. About a head of peeled garlic. Around an inch of ginger. Two scotch bonnet pepper. Just remove the stems. One stalk of celery. A few sprigs of scallion a generous amount of fresh thyme just remove the woody habits and finally a handful of cilantro place all that into your blender a food processor works pretty well too I'm going to give this a rough blend but first add half cup of oil olive oil is great and half cup vinegar cover that up and I'll avoid making this too smooth Oh, forgot the pimento. A large tablespoon is good. More won't hurt. Just blend that a bit. Green season done. This packs a ton of flavor. Mostly use some meat and seafood. That smell nice. This will be the flavor base for the brown seal chicken. Just set that aside while we break down our chicken. I see a lot of recipes use chicken pieces like an entire leg, thigh or wings. That must be a new thing because for as long as I can remember, brown sioux chicken is made from cubed bone in chicken. That's how mommy does it and that's how cook shops and most places I know do it. I prefer the bite sized cubes but let me know how you do your brown sioux chicken. I'm curious. I'm only going to use half this chicken. A sharp knife and going for the joints makes breaking down a chicken much easier. We still have to cut through some bones though. Typically if we are cooking chicken for Sunday dinner we will do all this from the day before and leave it in the fridge to marinate. Alright, good. That next half is going into the fridge for something else. I'm going to rinse this with a vinegar solution to cut the rawness of course. Drain off as much as that liquid as you possibly can. I always follow up immediately by washing my sink and cutting board after prepping meat. It's easy to contaminate stuff, especially in a smaller kitchen. Alright, time to season. Hit that with some salt. Be conservative. Black pepper. And green seasoning. Just put enough to coat everything. I will not be using any powdered seasons. Keeping this as nutty as possible and that marinade is already flavor packed. Give that a proper mix to coat everything. The pimento, thyme, and scotch really are shine. This smells lively. This is going into the fridge for at least an hour so the chicken can absorb all that flavor. I usually have extra green seasoning when I make it, so I usually use a silicone ice tray to freeze them up. This makes portioning out later really easy because I can just grab a couple cubes to make a quick dish. Throw that in the freezer. This is going into the freezer as well. For when I'm cooking a bit more food, I'll just use this in one go. The ice tray green season should be solid after a few hours depending on your freezer. When the green season is totally frozen, I pop them out of the ice tray and put them in another container. 
bag or ziplock bag to stay fresher for longer. These will stay in the individual cubes unless I thaw them so I'm placing them back into the freezer. Alright let's start cooking. First up is rice and peas. Rich and creamy. This one didn't turn out exactly how I wanted but it was still extremely delicious. Yush. I need a cup of red peas which I'm going to give a couple washes. Kidney beans are pretty popular for rice and peas too but red peas are doing today. You might see people saying this but kidney beans and red peas are not the same thing. The shape, size, flavor and texture are very different. Kidney beans actually are kidney shaped and much bigger than red peas. Top that off with some water, about 2 cups and this will go on medium heat. You could soak this overnight, the flavor and texture will be a bit better and it cooks quicker but in my experience it's not a big difference. Alright, I'm going to get some stuff together to season up the peas. Half a medium onion, finely diced so it cooks out completely. A couple stalks of scallion, a few cloves of garlic, diced fine just the same. A piece of smashed ginger. One scotchy, a piece of fresh thyme, a few dried pimento berries. Depending on the peas, this might take between half hour to an hour to cook. This is not enough water to cook the peas completely, but that's on purpose. While let it cook, we can juice the coconut for its milk. This is a key ingredient in rice and peas. You can use canned coconut milk or coconut cream. Those are good, but nothing beats processing a decent quality dried coconut yourself. It has so much better flavor. Striking the coconut with the back of a heavy knife works for me, but a hammer, concrete or a rock will also do the trick. The drier the coconut, the easier it is to remove the flesh. Sometimes it pops out on its own, but I'm going to use a spoon to remove these. I'm going to blend these so I'm just chopping them up into more manageable pieces. I'm gonna give this a one wash to remove trash, dirt or whatever. I want this rich so just barely submerge this in water. I'm going to blend this as smooth as possible. A cheesecloth would work so much better. Jump in with clean hands and give that a squeeze to get all that extra juice. nice that's really rich earlier i mentioned not using enough water to cook the peas i wanted to cook the peas most of the way and reduce the water a bit then come back and finish cooking with the coconut milk that way the rice and peas will be more custardy and creamy instead of greasy cook the milk long enough and the oil will separate next we just have to simmer until the peas cook That need a bit more time. That smash easily so it's ready for the rice but first I'm going to season with salt. Season closer when you add the rice so you can have better control. The liquid should be slightly saltier than you want the finished dish so give it a taste test. Mm, needs a bit more. 
This is optional but a tablespoon of brown sugar emphasizes the sweetness of the coconut. This shouldn't taste overtly sweet though so be conservative. Another taste test. Perfect. Rich and creamy. Let's get the rice. Two and a half cups of rice will work for this. I'm going to wash this about three times to remove as much of the free starch as possible. That way the rice is less sticky and we end up with grain separating. This is just some plain long grain white rice but basmati rice makes a really good rice and peas too. The rice should be fully submerged but using the inch measure is unreliable especially when you're cooking with heavy creamy coconut milk. This was kinda unnecessary because this is already really rich but I added 2 tablespoons of butter. Let that simmer for about 5 minutes. The grains are mostly hydrated now so we can go ahead and wrap this with cling wrap to make an airtight seal. Trapping the steam helps with even and complete cooking and making the rice shelly. Reduce the heat to low and cover. This needs about 8 more minutes. I accidentally turned this off so this got vacuum sealed. Turning on but the heat should do the trick. Alright, finally done. Eat rice grain cooked perfectly. Just going to fluff this up a bit. This is good but I like my rice a bit dry and a bit chillier. This is slightly too soft because I'm big on texture but this should taste damn good same way. If you don't get the urge to eat a bowl of rice and peas by itself, it's not really that good. So this didn't go as planned but it turned out great so let's make some brown stew chicken. Again I'm using all fresh ingredients but I will focus on technique to build deep flavor. Let's talk about what makes brown stew brown. Browning is the number one way we get that deep brown color in the brown stew chicken. This is also using pastries and sauces to deepen the color making them more attractive. I remember my mother making this from scratch with brown sugar. This is mostly caramel although some browning sauce are flavored so they add a bit more of additional flavor to the food. Soya sauce is also one way to get that brown color but this is usually salty with a distinct flavor. So there's always a limit on how much you can use without overpowering the meat but a lot of times I use both browning and soy sauce. Alright let's start cooking. Grab the marinated chicken from the fridge so it can come up to temperature. Browning and soy sauce are good but my favorite way to make brown stew chicken is with caramelized sugar. I'm adding about 2 tablespoons of brown sugar directly to the oil to let it melt and caramelize. You want to do this on medium low heat so it goes slow and doesn't burn. My first mistake was not using enough brown sugar. Next I'm adding chopped scallion, garlic and onion to stop the browning and get a good saute on the veggies. That needed to be darker. Two more tablespoons of brown sugar would have done the trick but I can't add it now. Next I'm going to brown the chicken and here was my second mistake. The chicken was extremely cold still and gave the pan a huge temperature shock which didn't work out for a nice brown color on the chicken. Usually the meat is seasoned up with browning so I wouldn't notice this problem but Browning off the chicken develops really deep flavor and I wanted a visual indicator of that. I'm still getting a bit of color but this is way too light. I was really trying to do this without using browning. Next I'm adding diced potato and tomato. These will add some nice texture to the sauce. Carrots are usually added here as well but I forgot them but it's fine either way. I'm going to let this continue to saute to get some more flavor and color. That's not much more color. Next I'm adding half cup of ketchup. This is going to add flavor and give the sauce its body. 
first. Let's try the soya sauce to see how much darker this would get. That's not bad, but this looks more like a fricassee instead of brown stew. I also have too much oil, so I'm going to get rid of some. I started with too much. That color isn't bad, but that needs a bit more soya sauce. Still not dark enough, but I can't add any more soya sauce, so I'm going to add a bit of browning. I'm trying to be conservative. Let's give that a taste test. That's good. The ketchup made it slightly tangy, but that will mellow with a little bit of cooking. Oh, and we don't want any wasted flavor, so add the remaining marinade from the chicken. This is almost ready, really flavorful and the smell is great. I just need a bit of water because there isn't much sauce. I usually don't add water to any Jamaican chicken stews but this has way less water and the flavor is good enough to not get watered down. Give that 5 minutes. That's done. Could use a bit of spice so I'm adding sliced kachi and some sliced peppers and onions this is going to add some bright fresh flavor to the brown stew chicken and that's done this one took extra tweaking to get everything just right but this is a solid pot of brown stew chicken i'm going to set that aside for now so mommy gave me some ripe plant so i'm going to fry one these are just shy of overripe so i have to use them up Fried rye plant is a popular side with Jamaican food. Sweet and starchy goodness. I'm going to slice this one up nice and thick and in round so I can get better presentation later. I'm going to fry these over medium heat. It's important to not turn your back on plant because as soon as you turn your back and you stop watching, they will burn. Fry until golden brown and then place on paper towel to get rid of the excess oil. Alright, everything is done now. So in typical feed and teach fashion, using a cup to get nicely shaped rice is pretty common in restaurants here and this measuring cup is perfect for that. Just compress it a bit so you end up with something that sticks together. Garnish that with some fresh parsley. I want some fresh vegetables, so lettuce, sliced tomato, and cucumbers will have to do. Next, hit that with the delicious Jamaican brown stew chicken. Nice. Next, we want that ripe plant. And finally, Garnish with fresh thyme and sliced scotchy and that's a delicious plate of Sunday dinner. This is great. Rice rich and creamy, coconut really a shine and the texture is not as bad as I thought it was. The chicken has a deep flavorful punch and the spice and flavor from the scotchy a shine. This pairs up perfectly with the rice and peas. Really good stuff. Alright, thanks God for 24k subs and for watching for the past 18 minutes. Check out my Patreon if you want to give a little extra support. This was fun and I will catch you in the next one.